Hi, everybody, and welcome to worship at St. Matthias United Methodist Church. This is the online worship experience for the 18th day of October 2020. I'm Bert Cloud. I'm the pastor here, and it's a joy to be with you. Uh, wherever you are, you are certainly welcome to, uh, to be here and to worship with us, and I pray that uh, God would be with you uh, as you are um, uh, here in Scripture, as you're praying with us, and as you are encountering the, the voice of God uh, wherever you you are. Please, if you have a chance, uh, grab a candle and uh, light it as a reminder for the way that Christ is present uh, with us. That's what we do in church, and uh, certainly encourage you uh, to do that as well. In your place, may it be a sacred place uh, where you are, and uh, as you experience this, may you encounter uh, this, the divine, uh, the, the love of God uh, in profound ways. Now, uh, we will uh, get started in just a moment, but I wanted to invite you to, to join with me in prayer as we uh, open our hearts to God. Let's pray. Merciful, loving, and holy God, we thank you for this day, for this opportunity to gather um, in your presence uh, and we're dispersed, Lord, but we know that you gather us in. And so as you are gathering us in now, we ask that you would speak to us, that you would reveal through your Holy Spirit what it is that you're trying to say to us this day, this very moment. We ask, Lord, that you would um, shoo away all the distractions and all those things that are looking to kind of push us off base, but rather that you would, um, you would draw us in in such a profound way that we find our home in you. We love you. And we pray all this in the holy name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And together, wherever we are, we say amen. Amen. All right, let's get to worship. Friends, I want to thank you for the many ways in which you've continued to support the life and ministry here at St. Matthias United Methodist Church. In November, we will have a sermon series, a message series about the power of thanks, of being in an understanding and a place of gratitude 
for all that we have been given and all that we have received from each other, from God. So I hope that you'll join us uh, for that. We will also be uh, beginning the process of anticipating uh, 2021. I'm so glad of anticipating a new year, but we will be anticipating that and inviting you to consider how you might plan to um, continue your support of this church and our ministries. So um, that starts in November. That's the power of thanks. And I'm really looking forward to having that conversation with you. Well, let's get back to worship. Hi there, I'm Kathy Smith. Today's reading is from the first chapter of James, verses 12 through 15. Those who stand firm during testing are blessed. They are tried and true. They will receive the life God has promised to those who love him as their reward. No one who is tested should say, God is tempting me. This is because God is not tempted by any form of evil, nor does he tempt anyone. Everyone is tempted by their own cravings. They are lured away and enticed by them. Once those cravings conceive, they give birth to sin, and when sin grows up, it gives birth to death. Also from the first chapter of James 1, verses 23 to 25, those who hear but don't do the word are like those who look at their faces in a mirror. They look at themselves, walk away, and immediately forget what they were like. But there are those who study the perfect law, the law of freedom, and continue to do it. They don't listen and then forget, but they put it into practice in their lives. They will be blessed in whatever they do. The word of God for us today. Thanks be to God. The passage that Kathy just read for us reminds us to not forget 
who we are. Now, we've actually worked with this passage uh, recently. Uh, in that time, in that conversation, we talked about how there are those things that are distractions, those things that are looking to um, uh, pull us in a particular direction that um, are tempting us to be or to do. And those temptations, it says, leads to sin and gives birth to sin and that sin gives birth to our death our spiritual death the death of our relationships the death of our relationship with ourself but it also uh, says that we need to be careful to remember as we are shunning those distractions and those temptations that we need to remember who we are. Remember that last part that she read? She said, those who hear but don't do the word are like those who look at their faces in a mirror. They look at themselves, they walk away, and they forget who they are. Now, we have mirrors all around us all the time. Most of us have mirrors in our home, the bathroom, of course. Uh, some folks put mirrors in um, a room to help it seem larger. There's a mirror in um, the dining room uh, in my home. It is not uncommon to have this reflection so that we can kind of check ourselves up. We carry some of us carry makeup carry a compact they can kind of you know open that thing up and look at ourselves uh, we will use our phones now we'll turn the camera around and have it be a mirror for us but for first century people for early Christians um, access to a mirror would have been a rare thing uh, some may not have had a mirror uh, at least um, one that they would have easily been able to access. Maybe still water, maybe uh, in a reflection from something, but you know, not, uh, uh, not just commonly available to every person. The uh, idea of having a mirror is that you are able to look at yourself, to remember who you are, to check yourself, to make sure that you're standing up straight and that you don't have a smudge on your face or that you know something is out of place it is a way of um, kind of orienting yourself and James says look there are people that will look at themselves in a the mirror they'll get a sense of that but as soon as they walk away they will forget they will forget aspects of who they are or how they appear or what they should address. You may have watched uh, the TV show Survivor. Uh, you know, when that came out in, what was it, 99, 2000 or something like that? I was in seminary. Gina and I watched that all the time. Every Thursday night, I think it came on, and we were like, oh, it's Survivor night. And um, we were hooked on that as much of the country was people i mean i don't know how many seasons it's still been on but it's it's not uncommon for people that go on that show or some of the other shows like um the show alone now i think that's been around for seven seasons that uh people who go off into these situations these places like this where it's not available they're kind of surprised when they come back and they enter back into regular society and find electricity and running water and bathrooms and all that, they're surprised by the mirror and seeing who they are, their physical appearance. Well, James says this is a spiritual issue as well, and he uses that absence of mindfulness about what we look like to illustrate how we can be absent-minded about who we are, about what kind of person we are called to be. We get lost in the day-to-day, -day, the, the grit and the grime, the, the, the push that comes from circumstances in our life, and we have to always be about that question of 
Who am I in this? I mean, we occupy different roles. We are, might be parents. We might be partners. We might be the boss at work. We might be the person that is the lowest on the ladder at work. We might have uh, different responsibilities inside of our community. We might have um, things that prevent us from uh, doing those things that we would hope to do or like to do or whatever. We occupy all those different roles, but fundamental to all of that, basic to all of our reality are certain things about who we are. One thing is that we are children of God. We are made in the very image of God. We are created with the image of God imprinted into us. It gets covered, it gets obscured. Sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes we don't want people to see that, but it's there. And we are also people who have lived a life that God has had dreams about, that God hopes for in the way that we express our gifts, our talents, those things that God has equipped us with or given us, not because of you know, how good we are, but because of what God is hopeful and is working to do in this world through us, with us, in spite of us. So fundamental to who we are is we are connected to our Creator. Isn't that something? But we are also, in that connection, we are also people who are being formed and reformed in that work of bearing the image of God. And the way that that happens is through the work of the Holy Spirit, the work of uh, the church and holy people in partnership with each other to help us to grow, to continue our redemption through helping us become more and more holy. I know it sounds weird, doesn't it? But the intent is for us to, to love like God loves, to, to be the bearer of the image of God. So if we forget that, we go off rails. We go off on our own, and we forget who we are. When uh, we have dinner at my home sometimes, uh, sometimes we have really good manners, and sometimes the manners, you know, they get set aside. Maybe it's a particularly good bowl of soup or <laughs> something really wonderfully slurpy, right? And so in our home, we say, you forget yourself. You forget your manners. Don't do that. There are many times in our lives when we will be confronted with something that will seem easy or something that will seem like the thing to do Maybe not for the greater good, but for expedience sake. And we forget what we are called, who we are called to be. You know, one of the ways in which we can study this is to hold the mirror back up. Our scriptures, our uh, ethical traditions and teaching and all the things that have been part of the life of a disciple are functionally mirrors, hand mirrors, full body mirrors that show us who we are, that remind us of not necessarily what we look like, but we, we are, what we are called to look like, maybe to spiff some things up, maybe to lose a little weight, maybe to take steps 
to be more like what our Lord has dreamed that we would be. Do you understand me? We still have work to do. And most fundamentally, the most fundamental part of our devotion to Christ is remembering who we are. To remember who God is and who we are in the light of that God, in light of the love and the ministry of reconciliation through Jesus Christ. Remembering who and how we can become what the Holy Spirit is guiding us to be. Sure, it's not always a pretty picture, but it's not a picture that is frozen in time. Walk up to a mirror, look at yourself, you know, look closely at the things that are there. And remember, you're created in the image of God and God is not done. Remember who you are and move forward in that memory. Your job this week is to hold up the mirror, but not get caught in vanity. That would be easy to do, wouldn't it? Your job this week is to hold up the mirror and to remember and to go and to do with what you've been given. So I say all of this to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to a community time and a time of prayer, I just wanted to remind you of our deep need to hold each other uh, very tenderly, to uh, treat other people with basic human respect, with the respect that you would uh, as you encounter the very image of God that I just talked about in the sermon. There's a lot of danger in the way that people have uh, allowed those uh, temptations, uh, allowed the destructive impulses to hold sway. I look at some of the things that are uh, traded back and forth on social media in our political discourse at the moment. I look at some of the ways in which uh, people have uh, demonized or criminalized or just any kind of, um, you know, treating of other 
as wrong. You know, the Lord looks at us as other, even though we are God's creation, even though we bear the very image of God, we are also not holy, not fully like the Lord is. He says, my ways are not your ways, and I know you, and still I love you. That's what the Lord offers. So it's very important that we are compassionate and merciful and that even though we might disagree with someone that we would still love as God loves. So I encourage you in this very difficult moment to um, hold to the Christian principles of love and compassion and mercy. That we would work not for division, but for reconciliation. And that we would live in hope, not loosey-goosey hope, but radical kind of tough-minded hope that says it may seem bad right now, but it's not over. Now, we will be invited to distraction. We will be invited to acting out towards other people. We will be invited to lots of temptation. But as I asked you just a few moments ago, we need to remember who we are and who we belong to, who is our teacher and who is our friend. Now, I also want to remind you that there's lots of things that are happening in our church's life. We're uh, adapting and trying to make sense of how we can attempt to do in-person worship, even as we are aware of how um, COVID cases are increasing within our country and that there seems to be a third spike. Um, we're going to do the very best we can to offer um, any programming in this safe a way as we can. I want to encourage you to, um, to look at our Facebook page. Uh, certainly check out the things that we're posting on YouTube. And also um, visit us at our website, stmathiasumc.org. Soon on that page, you will find the plans for um, a number of things. Right now, you can see how we're working towards a trunk or treat, which will be a nice, a, a nice way to gather as community and sort of, you know, push back and laugh at some of those things that look to distract us. But also, I want to remind you, and you'll see this soon, about the election night communion uh, that we will have. On uh, November the 3rd, we will have an online um, communion service available for you and for anyone that wants to participate. You'll need to bring your own elements, but we will bless those and we will uh, gather in the hope and in the understanding that the Lord is able to go and be with us anywhere that we are, anywhere that we would be physically, anywhere that we might find ourselves politically or socially or in relationships to other people. The Lord is about the business of bringing people together into him. Jesus brings all of creation into his arms. The scriptures tell us that. So on election night, in a nonpartisan way, this is not a partisan activity. This is not a Republican or a Democrat activity. But as people of faith, we will gather together online for an act of remembering the presence of Christ that binds us, that brings us together. 
That will be 7 o'clock, November the 3rd. Please plan to join us for that. Well, there's lots for us to pray about, and uh, so I want to invite you to take a moment to pray with me now. There will be a moment of silence that will be part of that, that you can offer your particular petitions as well. So let us pray. Merciful and loving God, God of all creation, God of heaven and earth, we thank you for the many ways in which you have revealed yourself to us. And we pray, God, that you would pour out your spirit on us, that you would help us to see with your eyes, that you would help us to hear with your ears, that you would give us a heart for the things that break your heart as we move in your world, as we live in the life that you have given to us. We pray, God, that you would be with those who are struggling this day, that you would be with those who are um, sick or who are injured or dealing with whatever condition. We pray also that you would be with those who are mentally and emotionally sick as well. And we ask that you would bring your healing hand, that you would bring your great physician's touch into the lives of so many, and you would do what you would do. We know, God, that when we pray, we pray, uh, thy will be done on heaven, on, on earth as it is in heaven. We ask, God, that you would bring your healing hand and that you would do the things that you d desire to do. And we ask, Lord, that you would help us to be part of that, just as you were calling us to do. We uh, have a number of concerns, particular people and situations in our lives, and we ask now that uh, in this moment, you would hear us as we pray. Thank you, God. And we pray for our healing, for our forgiveness, for the things that we have done or left undone. We pray, God, that you would be with those that we've hurt and that you would be with those who have hurt us or are looking to do that now. Transcend our hearts. Reinvigorate, reform our hearts so that they would beat for you, so that they would move in the character that is holy and from you. We need you. And we love you. And we pray all of this in the holy and the loving name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And together we remember the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Well, friends, that's all the time that we have for this week. I hope that you have found this to be a good moment that you have heard from the Lord and that as you move forward in this week that you will be able to carry the, the very good news, the very life-giving news of Jesus Christ into your relationships with your family, with your friends. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Take care of yourself. Wear your mask. Socially distance. Do the things that you need to do to take care of yourself and the people around you and live in the goodness of God. Take care. God bless. Thank you.